we're going to start looking at factors and multiples. But before we do that, we just need to make sure we all understand the words that we will use in this section. So if you look here, I have got something you probably know very, very well. Let's hope you do that. Four times three is 12. And I've got some words. Product divides into, divided by, multiple and factor. And these are the words I want to check that we know what they mean. So what I want you to do is to see if you can use each of these words and make a sentence with it using the fact that 4 times 3 is equal to 12. To show you what I mean, let's use the fact 4 times 3 is equal to 12 and the word product and the sentence I'll make is 12 is the product of 4 and 3. Okay, so I want you to pause the video now and make, write down for yourself, a sentence for each of these five words. Okay, let's go through the sentences you've made and see if we've got the same ones. For product, product is really just a fancy way of saying the answer to a multiplication calculation. So 12 is the product of 4 and 3 is what we can say in this case. So product is just the answer to a multiplication calculation. The next one divides into. What we can say here is that 4 divides into 12 with no remainder and 3 divides into 12 without giving us a remainder. This is because if you take 12 and you divide it by 4 you'll get the answer of 3. And so 4 divides into 12 with no remainder, and similarly 3 divides into 12 with no remainder. We can also say that 12 divided by 3 equals 4, or 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. So those are the two different ways we use the words divided into, or div divides into, or divided by. We now come to the two words, multiple and factor, which we're going to be using a lot in this next section. So multiple, hopefully you got the sentences, 12 is a multiple of 3, or 12 is a multiple of 4. We're only interested in positive multiples, and what we mean by that is, if we're looking for a multiple of 3, it's anything that's in the 3 times table. In other words, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, 39, 42 are all multiples of 3 because you can get to them by multiplying 3 by a whole number. The multiples of 4 will be 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, etc., etc., and those are all multiples of 4 because you can get to them by multiplying 4 by a whole number. So that's what a multiple is. Factor is closely related but just almost the other way around. Because 12 is a multiple of 3, it means that 3 is a factor of 12 and similarly 4 is a factor of 12. If something is a factor of 12, it means that it can divide into 12 without giving you a remainder. Check you've got these ideas right by looking at the following questions. So the first one we've done, 4 times 3 is 12. We can then talk about 12 being a multiple of 3 or a multiple of 4. And similarly, 3 is a factor of 12 or 4 is a factor of 12. What I want you to look at is, we could say we know for sure that 3 times 7 is 21. Make up the sentences for multiple and factor that go with that. We know that if we take 24 and we divide it by 6, we get 4. Make up the sentences with the word multiple and factor which go with that fact. Pause the video now and make sure you can make those sentences. Okay, did you get the sentences? 
21 is a multiple of 3 and 21 is a multiple of 7. That's because 21 is got by multiplying 3 by a whole number. Similarly, 21 is got by multiplying 7 by a whole number. And 3 is a factor of 21 because 3 can divide into 21 with no remainder. And 7 is a factor of 21 because 7 can divide into 21 with no remainder. Similarly, 24 is a multiple of 4 and 24 is a multiple of 6. And 4 is a factor of 24 or 6 is a factor of 24. Okay, we've got our words right, so now let's proceed. Write down all the multiples of 3 and then write down all the multiples of 5. Pause the video now and just do that quickly. Okay, hopefully you laughed at me and thought, I can't write down all the multiples of 3 because they'll go on forever. So let's just write down a few. And similarly, if we write down a few for 5, we'll get a picture that looks something like this. So the multiples of 3, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33. And we put these three little dots together Tots there to show it'll go on forever and ever, right? We go on 36, 39, 42, 45. We can just keep on going. Our multiples are 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. And again, we're just going to put three dots to show we could keep on going 60, 65, etc. All right. Now, if we have the multiples of 3 and the multiples of 5, we can ask what multiples do they have in common? In other words, what multiples are in this list as well as in this list? Well, hopefully you can see that 15 occurs in both lists. And the next one I see that occurs in both lists is 30. And if we carried on making the list, we'd find quite a few other multiples that occur in both lists. The multiples that occur in both lists are called common multiples. In other words, they are common to both lists. We are often interested in finding what we call the least common multiple, or sometimes people call it the lowest common multiple. And they abbreviate either of those as LCM. Well, that's very easy to find. If we've got a list of the multiples, we can easily circle the numbers that occur in both of the lists. And then if we want the least one, well, all we're asking is, what of those is the smallest? And hopefully, it's fairly obvious to you that the least common multiple in this case is 15. So the least common multiple of 3 and 5 is equal to 15. That means that 15 is the smallest number that is a multiple of 3 and also a multiple of 5. Try for yourself quickly to find the lowest common multiple of 6 and 8. To do this, you're first going to write out for me the multiples of 6. Then you're going to write out for me a list of the multiples of 8. And then you're going to see if you can find the lowest or the least common multiple of the two of them. Pause the video now and try that. Okay. How did we go? Did you get 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, etc., etc.? And here, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, etc., etc. And as you go along those lists, you can see very easily the first number that you get to that's in both of those lists is 24. So the least or the lowest common multiple of 6 and 8 is 24. That means that 24 
is the first number we'll come across. That's a multiple of 6 as well as being a multiple of 8. This means 24 is the first number we'll come across, the smallest number we'll come across, that 6 can divide into with no remainder, and that 8 can divide into with no remainder. Okay, let's practice some of these ideas. <laughs> 